Sustainable Route was a road trip uh, that I started on in the fall and it was a video blog started to interview um, different people that were focused on sustainability and environmental responsibility. My friend and I who went to school together at Bennington College in Vermont, we were initially really interested in just learning about sustainability. Um, it's this big green movement now and we wanted to know more about it. So I started coming up with ideas for a road trip just to go meet people um, that we thought were interesting. And it turned into a video blog because I was really interested in bringing other people along with us. I had my own personal video blog before uh, about for about a year and it just struck me as a very powerful tool to help educate people about what the green movement looks like or what sustainability looks like. A lot of people throw that word around, sustainability, and not a lot of people really know what that means or what it looks like particularly. Um, so I was interested in sort of blowing open the myths about people who were interested in environmental responsibility, I think, it gets a bad rap um, in the general media or the general public for being, you know, hippies or people who are sort of living on the edge of society. But I think if you're watching the news or if you're reading blogs, you, you'd realize that this green sustainable movement, you know, has a much more average person face than um, even I thought. I mean, when I started on the road trip, I really thought we were going to meet a lot of like out there people and I was concerned because I didn't want, you know, I didn't want that to skew people's idea as it always has and I was surprised um, that we pretty much didn't meet anybody that was like really out there like, you know, on the edge of society. I mean, every single person that we met was very down to earth really smart, really educated, and really looking at environmental issues from all different aspects. They weren't, you know, they weren't, uh, they weren't crazy. <laughs> I was worried that we were going to end up having to research for months and months and months to find the places that we were, thought were really cool. Um, so what I decided to do was um, work through word of mouth. Um, we started a wiki off of our site. We started a wiki through PV Wiki um, with the help of the video blogging community and we basically just put a shout out asking for people to tell us what they thought was cool. One of the things that was really important to me was to focus on small scale projects or small scale organizations because I think that um, you know, there's a lot of media attention on these bigger architectural firms who have resources and have PR people. So I was really interested in making known the people in their backyards who were doing really amazing things. Um, I think that, you know, with environmental issues becoming more mainstream, I think that the revolution is really going to happen in people's backyards and at their grocery store and, you know, in the small mom and pop businesses that are, you know, both struggling and thriving. It really depends on where you're looking. It's why I turned this project into a video blog because, you know, on a lot of levels it's sort of citizen journalism, but it's also just, the, hey, this is what I think is cool and maybe you'll think it's cool too. The most difficult thing about being on the road was balancing um, our sort of driving, eating, working sanity with the demands of making a video blog and trying to post as much as we could. If we weren't driving, we were sleeping. And if we weren't sleeping, we were, you know, going to meet someone and we were actually had a camera in someone's face. And so all of that time sort of pushed out the, the editing time. It takes an incredible amount of energy to put a camera in someone's face. You have to have all the right questions, you know. You really have to like get to the point of the story, not necessarily having any knowledge of, of the project beforehand, you know. Initially we were doing research about the places we were going to, but then eventually we just show up and say, what are you doing? Um, because we found that, you know, it, it, it didn't really help necessarily to know like background information because we were always just like learning 
from the beginning. My favorite story was um, Diane Wilson. She's a shrimper in Sea or was a shrimper in Sea Drift, Texas. And she wrote a book called An Unreasonable Woman, which was published by Chelsea Green, which were one of the first people that we interviewed in Vermont. Her story struck me because she was just this ordinary woman in Texas who um, sort of edu educated herself about uh, the pollution that was happening in her, her community and um, has done since then very radical actions to bring that information to the public and also to change their, um, their the company's policies. I think my hope for the website and for the video blog and for the information on there is one to just simply educate people about what's going on uh, in our country um, and what's inspiring and what's exciting. Um, but two, I also, I hope that um, other people become interested in their own community issues. And, um, you know, I think video can be a really powerful tool for anybody who's interested in picking up a camera and showing other people what's going on. I mean, I learned way more in this road trip than I ever did studying sustainability in college. And I just hope, I just hope that Anybody, I mean, even if it's just one person has taken a little bit away from that site and it's inspired them to maybe do their own thing. <laughs>